Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your host, Calvin Timms. You can find me over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin or on the Dynasty After Dark YouTube channel. Uh, Also on Rumble, Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you listen to the podcast. While you're there, please make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Leave a comment. Just helps with the algorithm. Tell a friend about the podcast. Just trying to get the name out there to more people. Today, we are going to go into the Dynasty tight end, my guys, for 2022 and beyond. A couple guys here that I think are going to return on their value and really jump up going forward after this season. So just to jump right into it, Liz, this week we are going to talk about Cole Komet as the number one guy. And I've been talking about Cole Komet basically all off season. He's someone that I am a really, really big fan of. And the benefits for Cole Komet are he is 23 years old, six foot six, 260 pounds. He's a juggernaut of a guy. Um, he is in year three right now out of Notre Dame, and he's playing for the Chicago Bears. And one of the things that uh, is biggest for Cole Komet is that he is not – Uh, being talked about as highly as I think he could be and should be in Dynasty right now. You can see that his Dynasty ADP is tight end number 12 overall, which I think is crazy low for a player like Cole Komet. Now, the reasons why I'm really high on Cole Komet are as follows. It's year three for him, so we all know about the year three tight end breakout for Dynasty football, for fantasy football in general. Uh, Tight ends usually don't contribute much as a rookie. In year two, they kind of get introduced a little bit more. And year three is when they really start to break out for fantasy purposes. You can see here down, uh, well, you can't see, but I can see on Sleeper here his stats for the last couple years. His rookie year, um, 44 targets, 23 catches 243 yards two touchdowns last year 93 targets which is really decent for a tight end finishes a tight end number 21 in PPR last year but Justin Fields rookie season so that's kind of to be expected but he was averaging 10.2 yards per catch which for a tight end is great so I think that that right there is a perfect illustration of why I'm so high on Cole Komet you look at this team and I've talked about it numerous times this offseason so if you haven't heard it yet Yet, the Bears offense is not good. It is not a good offense. Now, that means that possibly Cole Komet could suffer from that, right? But I think Darnell Mooney, David Montgomery, and the other wide receivers that they have on this team are good enough to take heat off of Cole Komet that he's not going to be the only focus guy by opposing defenses. And I'm very high on Justin Fields as well. Part of that is because somebody's going to have to catch the ball for him, and he's going to have to win games on his own. Now, Justin Fields has a high rushing total, so his passing might not be there. But Justin Fields is a very good pass passing quarterback, and it's not just the athlete that you're looking for in him. So if he's going to be throwing the ball, I think it's going to be to Darnell Mooney. I think it's going to be to David Montgomery, and I think it is going to be to Cole Komet. So Cole Komet had 93 targets last year. I would not be shocked if it's 120 or more targets this season. And let's say he catches 75%, right? That's about 90 catches, give or take, at 10.2 yards per carry. He had no touchdowns last year. That is not going to continue so you can pencil him in for like 900 yards maybe possibly and about five touchdowns this year I think that's a pretty good return on tight end number 12 that's almost a league winning type of return for where he's going right now and what you can get Cole Komet for so I'm very high on Cole Komet there's a lot of benefits to him and when you look at the schedule this year It is a little bit rougher at the beginning of the year. You got San Francisco and Green Bay in weeks one and two. Giants in week four. Minnesota, they don't really have a good defense. Washington in week six. New England in week seven. Um, But after that, it gets really soft for the second half of the season until playoffs, basically, where they got Philly, Buffalo, um, and Detroit, which isn't terrible if you can get to the championship week this year. But Philly and Buffalo is not great this year, but I think that Cole Komet is someone that you're buying in Dynasty for this year and definitely moving forward. The Bears are on the upswing. I know it doesn't feel like it, but they are. 
I trust the process with what they're doing. I think that they're going to be getting more talent on this offensive line next year in free agency. They're going to overpay for some of these guys. I think they're going to get more weapons next year, but I think Cole Komet is someone that is going to thrive with Justin Fields, especially this season and at tight end number 12 pricing. I think that there is a massive upside in him as he has a very high potential in my opinion to finish as even maybe a top five or six tight end so I think that is just going to be a big return on investment and he's only 23 years old so you're buying in very young so I think we could see a breakout this season and that is why I'm all in on uh, Cole Komet this year now my second guy that I wanted to talk on I'm a little bit more nervous on this one uh, after looking at the current ADP for him but Irv Smith with the Minnesota Vikings he is currently 23 almost 24 he'll turn 24 I think in October October or November, I can't remember exactly what, but he's currently tight end 11. He's going ahead of Cole Komet, which just illustrates how low that Cole Komet is in Dynasty ADP right now. Now, the reason why I'm high on Irv Smith are kind of similar to Cole Komet. You look at who the Vikings have, and Dalvin Cook, good good pass catcher, right? Justin Jefferson, amazing. Top top receiver in the NFL, maybe the number one overall wide receiver. Dude's just crazy good. Adam Thielen, he's been getting a lot of hype about being the old Adam Thielen, but after those three guys, who else really is there on this team? I know people are excited about KJ Osborne, Mir Smith-Marset, but BC Johnson, these are all guys that people are hoping can take a step forward, but yeah, similar to Irv Smith, they haven't really done it just yet. Now, Irv Smith is going into year four for him this year and his basically last year was completely lost he got injured in the preseason he got injured a little bit already this year with a hand injury but he should be back for week one supposedly so I'm not freaking out on him just yet but he does make me a little bit nervous now you look at 2020 and this is why I'm excited about Irv Smith going forward we know the the history of Kirk Cousins in the tight end position. Jordan Reed back in the Washington Redskins days back at that time. Um, Kyle Rudolph here with the Minnesota Vikings for many years. Kirk Cousins has always utilized the tight end, especially in the red zone. He loves to go to those guys. He likes his bigger body guys in the red zone. And that's kind of why Adam Thielen is also someone that he likes in the red zone. Six foot two, 200 pounds. He's a bigger bodied wide receiver that he loves to target in the red zone. Kirk Cousins feels comfortable going to those guys. You have a new offensive system coming over here, a Sean McVay style of offense that they're going to be utilizing more offensive schemes. You don't have the old curmudgeon in uh, Coach Zimmer anymore that is going to try and run the ball on every single play. And it's very obvious from from a lot of the post-firing interviews that Zimmer did not like Kirk Cousins at all, didn't like him one bit. And which is hilarious because Kirk Cousins literally kept that guy in a job for multiple years beyond what he probably should have. Great defensive mind, but not the best head coach. So now we got an offensive system coming over here, and we know what Kirk Cousins likes to do with the tight ends on this roster. Now you look at the other tight ends that are on the Vikings right now, Ben Elfison, whatever that name is, and Johnny Munt. There's no competition for Irv Smith as long as he can stay healthy. Now in 2020, and I wanted to point this out, this is why I'm so excited about Irv Smith. He finished the season with eight and a half yards per target, 12.2 yards per catch, which is crazy high. Now I was really high on 10.2 for Cole Komet, who I just talked about, but 12.2 for a tight end is great. He had five touchdowns that year playing 13 games and he was a second year tight end. So not even someone that had reached that year three breakout for the tight ends and uh, was with a lesser offense in my opinion. So I think with this new system that they have going on, as long as Irv Smith can stay healthy, I think that he's definitely in line for probably 70 to 80 targets. He's not going to get near the volume that Cole Komet is, and that's what makes me a little bit more nervous on someone like Irv Smith. But let's say he gets 70 to 80 targets, right? We'll cut it right in the middle, 75 targets. He'll probably have, finish around 
60 catches roughly. Um, 60, that's about 750 yards and more than likely about eight touchdowns. I think that is very good for tight end number 11. I think that he would be able to really jump up. And there's a couple guys up there in the top 10 that I'm not sold on completely. Um, there's a lot of potential with them. They're better athletes than Irv Smith, someone like TJ Hawkinson or even Dallas Goddard, but they haven't stepped forward either. And this is why tight end kind of sucks. Picking a my guy for tight end is just rough. Um, I really wanted to just pick Kyle Pitts, to be honest with you, because I love Kyle Pitts. I was watching a uh, real quick aside here. I was watching hard knocks last night and Kyle Pitts was playing against the uh, the Lions in their scrimmage preseason game one, right? And everyone's talking about the the first round pick, first overall pick for the Lions. The dude is a monster defensive end, right? Um, massive guy there, but he looked so tiny lined up across from Kyle Pitts because he was on the first string. He played the first series there, and Kyle Pitts just made him look so tiny. It is ridiculous the kind of athlete that Kyle Pitts is. So I'll just throw that out there. I wanted to do that, but I don't think there's a ton of value because everyone is high on Kyle Pitts right now. So I wanted to throw two guys out here that I think are going lower than they probably should. And I think that they're going to return on that draft cost with a good fantasy season. And again, Irv Smith is only 23, almost 24 years old. If he really does take a step forward, there's a potential that you could have him as the next tier of tight ends because a lot of these guys that are up there that are elite tight ends are getting up there in age. You know, Travis Kelsey's 32. He's the only one over 30 in the top five tight ends. You got uh, George Kittle. You got Darren Waller. Both of them are coming up on 30. Kittle, I think, is one year younger than Darren Waller, who is 29 right now. So 28 for Kittle, 29 for Waller. And I think Waller actually turns 30 this season. So they are getting up there in age. They're not spring chickens anymore. Tight ends can usually play a little bit longer, but a lot of these guys are going to start to age out soon, and we're going to need replacements. And tight end, there's not a ton of options as replacements right now, unfortunately. The position is just kind of rough. So I think that Irv Smith is one of those next tier guys. Get him while you can. So these two guys I'm very high on for 2022 and beyond. I think that they're a steal in Dynasty right now for what they could return, especially this season. And yes, they're probably not going to be difference makers. Cole Komet has the opportunity, I think, to be a difference maker for fantasy football. But I think that these guys are both very safe options. If you're trying to get a guy that you can just plug in and feel good about every single week, you're not going to feel great about him. You're not going to feel great when you're going up against Travis Kelsey or Kyle Pitts because they're just supreme athletes. They, they're they game breakers right there, right? But you're not going to feel bad playing Irv Smith or Cole Komet every single week, in my opinion. You might have a couple weeks where they have down weeks, which happens with every single tight end, even Kyle Pitts and Travis Kelsey. But I think for the most part, you're going to be happy having those guys in your tight end position. And if you're in tight end premium, even better. I think these guys are going to definitely soar even more in that format. So these are two guys that I really like for fantasy football this year. Let me know what your thoughts are when you get a chance. You can follow me again over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin or on the Dynasty After Dark YouTube channel. Thank you again for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this content. You can find all my other my guys over on YouTube or Spotify, wherever you listen to the podcast, the quarterbacks, wide receivers, and running backs. And uh, next, I'm going to start my not my guys episodes and name a couple guys that I am out on completely for 2022 and beyond. So thank you guys again so much for listening and good night.